where we're talking about history and randomness and where you kind of differentiate between a deterministic and a stochastic universe. And I wonder, first of all, you know, stochastic is an interesting word. I wonder if you could just, I guess, kind of define the two and then kind of just talk about uh, the kind of differences between them and I guess the evidence for each principle. Stochastic is, is really um, a word that, that, that describes something that's got random elements to it, so chance elements. Um, so, so stuff that's not entirely predictable, you can't exactly predict what's going to happen. Whilst deterministic means that you can predict exactly what's going to happen in the future. And, and if you find the right mathematical equations, you could predict indefinitely into the future with the right computing power and what have you. Um, and now there are some physicists who argue that when the universe was, that the universe is deterministic. So what that means is that if we were to do an experiment and we were to set up the universe in exactly the same way that it began 13.77 billion years ago, and we ran it forward, you and I would be sat here having this conversation. And they, there are theories like sort of metadeterminism and, and what have you, where, where some physicists argue that that's the case. Now, if that's true, that's really interesting, because it means that all of those things that we think are free will, that we make decisions about, aren't free will, and free will is just an illusion. Now, the flip side of that coin is that the universe is, has random elements to it, so there's chance is involved. And that means that if we were to do that experiment again, create the universe exactly as it was at the beginning, that incredibly, uh, you know, pit, that small pinprick of incredibly intense energy in exactly the same way it was at the beginning, and we ran it forward, then we wouldn't necessarily be here. You know, the Earth might not be here. If the Earth was here, humans might not have evolved. There might still be dinosaurs wandering around, or life might not have got started. There may be no moon. All of these sorts of things. And so... If there are chance elements, I think one of the questions you have to ask is where does that randomness come from? And because, you know, we, we some bits of the universe, we, we have equations, we could describe the behavior of it pretty well. You know, we can describe the orbits of the planets around the sun pretty well. We can describe the, the tracks that, that comets make across the night sky when they're going to come close to Earth and what have you. So there are some things we can predict pretty well that are pretty close to deterministic, if not exactly deterministic. But, you know, free will and, and, and life and what have you, many biologists would tell you that the genetic mutations appear to be random. They appear to be stochastic, so occurring by chance. So where does that come from? And the one thing that, um, you know, uh, physicists and, and biologists and lots of people would say does look to be random is the behavior of very, very small particles in, in, in what's referred to as you know, quantum mechanics. And, and what that means is it, it's impossible to pin down all properties of a tiny particle like an electron or even an atom. So you might be able to measure something about it very accurately, but then you can't tell anything else about it. So you might be able to say how fast it's going, its velocity, but you don't know where it is very accurately. And so that's kind of one area where randomness exists. And and, 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 and so the physicists who argue for determinism believe that at some point we'll decide that isn't random and we'll be able to predict it accurately. But at the, at all the evidence we've got at the moment is it's, it's, um, it, 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 it's got a random element to it. It's stochastic. Will we ever get a definitive answer to that question? So that's a very good question. There's... There are some hypotheses out there that some physicists have put up that um, kind of allow us to take the randomness that we see at the quantum level and argue that it's deterministic. Now, one of those theories is something called the many worlds theory. And that says that everything that can happen does happen, but we only experience one reality. And there's a kind of parallel universes. I know it sounds like something out of the films, doesn't it? But there's um, parallel universes where uh, other outcomes are happening and, and each of these um, outcomes occurs, but we only experience one of them. The problem with that is it's untestable. So it's, it's, not a, it's not a particular, it's an interesting thought experiment, but it's not a testable hypothesis at the moment. Will we be ever, ever able to test it? I mean, never say never, but at the moment it's very difficult to see how we can test it. So in assuming that, and, and, you know, as science finds out more and more information and we kind of get better at interpreting the data that we've already got, it's possible that we may come up with some new theories or some new experiments that allow us to say, actually, the, 
the quantum realm is is um, predictable, uh, you know, um, is, is deterministic. But all the evidence we've got at the moment suggests that's not the case. So I, I, you know, my my hunch is that 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 randomness is real, that we're not going to be able to explain it away as deterministic. And, and that means that the universe is stochastic and that that means that if we were to rerun the clock again, we wouldn't necessarily be here. Hmm. Yeah. And just in terms of, I guess, of, of a just a novel thought experiment, if, in fact, the determinism theories were true and that we could predict what Joe or Tim in 10 years would be having for breakfast and they would, in fact, be having that, what kind of, I guess, implications m might that have? Because that's, that's the kind of questions that I've been <laughs> I've been thinking about. Yeah. No, I mean, that's that's interesting. So one of the roles of science is to be able to predict um, the future, you know, and and that would be useful if we were. So, so I guess there's two parts to the question. So first of all, if, if we were able to decide the world is deterministic, um, you know, on our day to day living, it's probably not going to impact you and me very much, to be honest. And, and the reason for that is, say we discover it's deterministic, actually, the computing power to um, even if we, un, you know, if it's deterministic, it means there's a set of equations that exist that would allow us to predict accurately everything that happens into the future. But we'd need to find what those equations are. And those equations would probably be tracking every particle uh, in, you know, our, our bit of the universe or, or even the entire universe. And the computational power to do that would probably have to be as large as the universe itself. So we wouldn't, probably be able to say, uh, you know, what we'll be having for breakfast in 10 years time. Although I always have granola, a banana and yogurt. So I'm pretty, pretty confident I can predict that anyway, without the universe being entirely, uh, entirely deterministic. Um, you know, uh, so who knows? Um, uh, you know, bananas, bananas might be unavailable that week. So I might have to have something different. So but on a more serious note, if we get you know, as science gets better and better at making um, accurate predictions of systems, that can be useful because it can help from all sorts of things, you know, like the development of self-driving cars to better predictions of the weather, to probably better understandings about the impacts that uh, we're having on our natural environment, things like climate change, um, you know, uh, modifying um, natural ecosystems. We might be able to better predict the consequences of that. And if we are able to better better predict the consequences of that. We could also, you know, perhaps come up with better ways in um, identifying which interventions are most likely to work in our favor, sort of reducing the, the negative impact.